Simple One Day Talk Show. Really excited to have all you here, um, here uh, in person and also on the replay. Um, we're excited to, ha um, to have Cherie join us uh, shortly, and she's going to tell us all about herself and her journey through um, while she became a coach and how she uh, used to be like a human resource person. And now she's just um, helping women get through trauma and um, to getting on with their lives. So I'm really excited to, to introduce you to Cherie. Um, we had a really great conversation the other day and um, we just, I just think she's wonderful. So welcome Cherie. Thank you. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm excited to be here with you, Luann. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your journey and um, how you became a coach? Sure. I, my, my background is in, in training and development. I've worked in that career for about 19 years and um, little did I know that I um, I had a, a passion for coaching because I really loved helping people grow and develop and, you know, personally and professionally. And so that's why I chose the, the, the career. Um, and I found myself um, in a, a transition myself and um, out of a job, my first job in my career, um, kind of going through a difficult time in uh, my new marriage. And I started working for, well, not working, but volunteering for a women's resource center. And I, in the midst of that, you know, dealing with my own transition, I was helping other women, you know, navigate their challenges. And that place was, um, um, the women's resource center was a place for women to find the resources that they needed, whether they needed housing, um, just different things. And we, we housed a lot of the resources there. And I became a peer counselor and that was to, you know, kind of help them navigate, um, you know, the resources. And um, I became, um, I started facilitating um, workshops, you know, self-esteem, you know, different types of um, kind of skill kind of development uh, um, type of uh, workshops. But doing, when I was peer counseling, I realized that I was doing more of coaching. I started, you know, I felt like um, I was moving more into a space of helping women identify what they want mm -hmm. and what those next steps are. Totally different what I was trained to do. And I was kind of like taken to the next level and I was like, wow. And then the light bulb would go off in them. And, you know, it was like they left with a plan, not only with the resource that they need, but I gave them like a plan mm -hmm. to work towards. And that's how I, that was probably back in, Mm, in the early 2000s. And um, I started um, thinking, huh, I like this kind of coaching thing. So I started investigating and interviewing um, other coaches and I ended up getting the certification. And so that was the kind of thing that I did on the side while I was working. And I just incorporated that in um, my work. And then the last position that I held, I was a leadership coach, um, leadership trainer. And, and the manager started sending their employees to me just for coaching. Oh, wow. So um, so I did that on the, on the corporate side and, and started doing it personally um, through my own transition. I, and I'll be sharing that with you because I want to um, talk. Um, I have a presentation that I want to talk about. And so I'll be telling you a little bit more um, about my journey um, and how that unfolded. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us today and being part of the one day talk show. And um, so uh, tell us a little bit about um, what your idea of unstoppable is. Unstoppable. For me, the idea of unstoppable is when you have a vision, because I'm, I'm really big on um, having a vision for your life, creating that vision. When you have a vision for your life, and although you're going to be faced with different challenges and things that come up, that's just how, how life is. You know, we have to navigate those obstacles and those setbacks and all those things. For me, becoming unstoppable is being determined understanding that you have these things that 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 you're dealing with your your um what i call them your out of vision circumstances the things that get in your way mm -hmm. 
from living the life that you desire to live. I think with, with having a vision for me, that's how you become unstoppable. You know, you're determined, look, this is what I want. This is what I believe that I, I'm here for. This is my destiny. And I'm going to go for it no matter what. I'm going to figure out a way how to navigate my child. That might mean I have to make some adjustments, some um, some alterations, but I, I'm just going to forge full force ahead. Awesome. Awesome. I always think of it as like, okay, no matter how many times I get knocked down, I'm getting back up. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's so funny you ask that because I had on a t-shirt, uh, I was working out this morning and my t-shirt said unstoppable. And I just realized that <laughs> that's the theme for today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You must have like had that intuition when you picked that shirt. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, um, what, would you like to go ahead and get started on your uh, presentation then? Um, yes. I'm going to go ahead and share my, um, my screen. Let's see how, okay. I should have permission. Okay. Okay. Oh, awesome. There it is. Okay. And okay. Wonderful. So can you see that? Yes. Right. Okay. So what I wanted to talk about today, this is something that I, I as I mentioned, I am really big on having a vision for your life. I think that's so important. So I'm going to be talking about visioneering and what that is. And that's really about navigating the, the blocks that, um, the blocks to your destiny, because we all have a destiny. We all have a purpose and why we're here. Um, but yet we know that there's going to be some blocks. There's going to be some challenges, the things that get in our way. And that's what I want to, want to focus on as I talk about that. So my, my question would be like, what are some of the things that are really getting in your way of, of you living that amazing life, that the life uh, where you are using your full potential, um, you're discovering um, your deepest desires for what you want and just being that extraordinary woman. There are things that that get in our way of being connected to that our destiny and, and our purpose for, our, and it causes us to um, sometimes feel stuck, feel trapped. You know, we don't have the freedom to really live out our lives. And I call these blind spots because we all have them. If you're driving a car, um, and you're trying to get over on, on the next lane. You know you've got the, you've got you've got some blind spots, and sometimes you aren't aware of those blind spots. And so that's what like what destiny is is like when you're trying to navigate um, along the road of destiny and purpose. You run into some blind spots. So I I identified these blind spots of the things that get into your destiny. And I came up with this, a blind spot is an area in the range to your destiny that you cannot see properly. That's the stuff that obstructs it, okay? From you getting to your destiny. And those are the things that I call blind spots to your, um, that are in the way of you, you know, living full out into your destiny. And so some of the things that might get in your way of, of that obstruct your view of your destiny, where you're supposed to be um, in your life, what you were created for, there could be things, um, things that have been programmed. Um, you know, we call that conditioning, if you will, you know, if your background, things that maybe people have said to you and you're still holding on to those thoughts those things that um, that even well-meaning people have said to you. You know, I, I can recall where a, a teacher had said something to me that really was in my brain, even throughout school and going to graduate school, was that, that thing he said to me that, um, that really made me feel like I wasn't smart enough. 
to do certain things. So sometimes we can hold on to those things. Those those are a blind, uh, a blind spot that will obstruct your, your way of really living um, out your full potential. And then we have trauma. You know, there are experiences that we've had that... Um, that uh, whether it's health in our in our finances, maybe you've been disappointed. You've had a loss, you know, of, of a loved one, a loss of career, your business. You know, these are things that we hold on to that get in our way. Those traumatic and negative experiences, and then sometimes I uh, we get it in our own way that we don't put ourselves in the equation of happiness because we're so busy making sure that everybody else is okay, that we think we're okay. That can be a blind spot. And I know sometimes that could be um, like that from, from moms. You know, as long as everybody is good, I'm good. Yep. But true. what about you? What about your destiny, your purpose? So that's, a, um, that's one of the blind spots. And also maybe lack of cl uh, clarity about where you want to be. Not sure. You know, I hear that um, a lots of times. You know, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I don't know what I'm here for. I don't know what my next steps are mm -hmm. to my destiny or even what that looks like. So those are just a few things that um, I believe that um, obstruct you um, from from moving forward. These are some of the, the blind spots. So I have blind spots. Interestingly, I am visually impaired. And so when I say visually impaired, sometimes people think when you're visually impaired, they don't understand that, you know, are you in the dark? Um, I see, I see things differently. Uh, I may not see things so well, you know, I have low vision, um, but I've learned how to, to use my blind spots. So I understand what it's like to literally to have blind spots um, in your life. You know, I have them um, visually, but also, you know, there are blind spots that, you know, we deal in our, you know, in our minds. Um, so I really understood how um, women in a different way, you know, have blind spots because I've had them and um, I had a lot of fears about uh, becoming visually impaired. You know, I started having challenges in my um, early 20s and it was just like this avalanche of um, eye issues, um, diseases. I've gone through several um, surgeries um, and still... Um, have had some, some vision loss and, and some vision changes. But what I learned, um, Luann, in, in, in all this and everybody that's here um, and those who will be um, listening on the replay is that sometimes in life, you have to be open to, you know, all the challenges, the out of vision challenges that you, must learn how to live by your inner vision light that I call it. And that's where that we have to have a different mindset. And I believe um, earlier, I think someone talked about mindset. Um, we have to shift our mindset um, from seeing what's outside of us and what's around us and what's not working for us and start going inside of us, that light inside of what you want, you know, what you desire and you learning how to live by your inner vision light. And that's for me, that's what I had to learn how to do because as a young girl, interestingly, I was always visualizing my ideal situation. You know, when I was being bullied, you know, I visualized my ideal situation, how I, want, how I saw myself, uh, being a confident person, um, you know, doing certain things in my life. And I believe that I had to go through that because I didn't know as an adult that I would be challenged with my vision. So early on, I knew how to tap inside my inner vision light. So when I actually had to go through these visual um, challenges, I would learn how not to live by my outer vision circumstances, but by my inner vision light. 
So to me, that's a powerful thing to do. I learned how to do that um, early on. And that's why, you know, I always say I'm not visually impaired. I'm not visually impaired. I'm in, I'm visually inspired to live beyond my blind spots, literally. There you go. <laughs> Love it. So, so what I did was that was the turning point for me because when you talk about, and sometimes I really don't like to use the, um, you know, the term visually impaired because I'm visually inspired. That's how I see myself. And that's how I live my life. So the turning point for me was to turn impaired vision, not looking at when we talk about impaired being broken, mm. not being broken um, and um, um, damaged, if you will, but being inspired by with vision. And that's learning how to live by my in, inner vision life. So, you know, taking that, that um, what was a traumatic thing for me in the beginning, looking at how I can shift that experience into something greater beyond me. Because what we don't see sometimes is when we are dealing with certain things, you know, traumas, um, there's sometimes there's a message in that and yeah, that's a challenge to see that when you're going through the pain and the dis disappointment and the hurt, but there's a message in that mess, as I like to say, there's a message in the mess and it's all in how we, we perceive it and how we can make that shift into using that message. What can I take away and how can I live my life um, in a different way? How can I move beyond my, move beyond 2020, I like to say. Because we don't have, I don't have perfect vision. Not everybody has 2020 vision. Sometimes when we're dealing with, with things in our lives, we have to move beyond 2020 vision, the things that we see around us and go inside and create that vision of how we want to see ourselves showing up, even whatever situation that we're in. So that was a turning point for me. And so with that turning point, I began to live my destiny and my purpose. And when I did that, it opened up so many doors for me because I've always had a vision. I, you know, I have a vision board. I have one on my background of my, my desktop. I might create one on a board, but I always are written it down in my journal. I always had a vision to go to, to Europe. I've been able to do that, go to France, Italy, Spain. I've always had uh, a vision of, of doing something that was unusual for someone like me. I play golf. I love to play golf. <laughs> I, you know, and I always wanted to be in a, a uh, position where I could spend time with my mom. My mom is 85 years old and there's pictures that you see, see she was 80. I think she was probably 82 there. You know, and if you know my mom, she doesn't really like to travel as much. But we went to Jamaica, you know, with my best friend. So to, to, to be able to do those things and then to have a vision to be able to um, um, speak, you know, at women's groups and, and conferences and things of that nature. You know, write or author a book, um, um, do training and facilitating, you know, having a, a career in that. All this was a vision of mine, even with the deemed impaired vision, not knowing how my life would turn out, but the inner vision that I had for my life, the visionary that I did allowed me to be able to do these things. So um, I get excited when I think about that. <laughs> It's almost kind of like emotional thing for, for, for me when I think about that, because I understand what it's like to have that trauma. You know, me going through trauma, not knowing if I was going to be blind, because I told I would I would be blind. Um, but yet I chose to take that and to use that and see it as a gift to turn it into to purpose and how I show up in my life. Nice. Very nice. So. Blind spots position you for clarity. And I know that as you know what I just shared, you know, my experience. 
when you have these blind spots, this is an opportunity to really get clear in the midst of that um, unclearness, if you will, because it helps you identify your authentic self, who you are. It also um, helps you ignite your, your passion for your life and your work. You know, it helps you create that vision for, for what it is that you want to have. It also will shine a light on your inner brilliance. You know, those gifts, those talents, those natural abilities. I call that your DNA, your divine natural abilities, because we all have them. And then it leads you towards the path of your destiny. So blind spots, again, that's an opportunity to step back in the midst of those obstacles obstacles, and begin to navigate and using these, um, spending time getting clear about where you want to be, what you want, what does that look like and how to show up in being that person. So it, it does position you for clarity if you allow it to, if you seize that opportunity. So blind spots can help you see beyond your natural sight, see beyond 2020. And it helps you, um, it gives you unlimited possibilities and potential. Um, it helps you come up with these divine ideas for service, you know, especially if you're in business and not necessarily, you know, business. Sometimes, you know, you may want to start a nonprofit or just do something of service. Um, it helps you and it helps you see your future self, which is that amazing, um, awesome, phenomenal woman that you are. And so, let's see, let me go back. Think up. There we go. Okay. So here's the reward um, of blind spots. And, and it's been a rewarding thing for me is because, you know, during that, that time in and having time to really discover who Cherie was and what Cherie wanted and what her purpose is and how to take those blind um, spots and use them um, in a way of, of, of service um, that led me to my destiny and purpose and the things that I've, I've been able to do throughout my career, the things that I'm doing now and that I'm very passionate about is that I get to wake up feeling excited and happy about what I get to do. And that's the reward uh, with blind spots. And it, to me, it also helps you face adversity and makes you want to push through. You know, when you talked about being unstoppable. Yeah, when you identify your blind spots and you get clarity around those things and you create that vision of how you see yourself and what you want for your life, you can show up being unstoppable. So what I have determined that our five biggest destiny blocks, number one is unresolved issues from the past. That's a blind spot, the things that we hold on to, you know, things that maybe have happened to us and things that have said to us uh, or things that didn't work out. We hold on to those things. Um, um, seeking outward approval for, for what you want. I used to be bad about that myself and especially seeking approval for my mother. Mm. And sometimes I realized that was a blind spot to me because it was more of what would she think um, and what she thinks I needed to do. Not who Cherie is, not her authentic self. So sometimes that can be a trap. Um, and, and using problems and issues and things and people as a scapegoat for your immobility. Oh, I can't do this because of this. Oh, I'm not able to do this because I don't have that. So we use, those can be um, excuses or blind spots. Um, and sometimes people don't realize that. Um, fear of, of, of leaving, leaving your conference spot. Yeah, I used to be bad about that. I want to stay hidden. Oh, I'm comfortable right here. Don't put me out there in front of everybody. You know, this feels good. But that doesn't get you to your destiny, 
to where you need to be. And then unwilling to commit and be accountable to a plan of action, for sure. These are the, the five big, biggest blocks to your, um, your destiny. So I want to say to everyone that you were created for greatness. We all have greatness inside of us. And what that looks like for you can be created through vision. And so this is where I want to introduce you to visioneering. This is what it looks like, visioneering. And what that is, visioneering is... Let me just move this here. Okay, there we go. Visioneering is the course one follows to make dreams a reality. It is the process whereby ideas and beliefs take on substance. Visioneering is like being an engineer of your life. You know, engineer, what do, what do they do? They, they, um, they design, um, they invent. Visioneering can be used the same way to create is a process of creating the life that you want, designing that, putting those beliefs into substance. And so I want to introduce you to the formula to visioneering. And that formula is made up of inspiration plus beliefs, plus action, plus determination, and plus completion, visioneering. So I wanna break each one of these formulas down. But before I do, uh, I just want to check in. Luann, any questions? No, I really okay. enjoyed this. It's great. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So the first thing to visioneering is inspiration. That's the first formula. And, and what that looks like, I like to say, is that you're creating and capturing your own movie, putting, creating a mind movie. You know, lots of times we love to, I, look, I'm a Netflix watcher. I will watch a movie <laughs> all day long and don't let me get on a series. <laughs> <laughs> I will binge watch that thing all day. But where we get inspiration from is through our own move, creating our own mind movie of the things that we want. And we cast ourselves in that role. You become the leading lady on your own screen of life. And you allow yourself to, to feel excited about the possibilities of what you desire. You connect with people and things that stimulate you, stimulate your vision. You know, just like being on, um, on this talk show, you have many women who have shared uh, um, their vision, their passion, the things that they're doing. And this is where you are networking with people and you're being stimulated about these other visionaries. visionaries. Um, and then you act in a way that mirror who you want to become in your vision. This was something that I did all the time. I learned how to, you know, when I could see it, I began walking in it, acting like um, I'd already had it. I remember being, um, before I transitioned into my career, I used to work a lot of administrative roles, um, answering the phones, you know, administrative assistant. Um, but yet I would visualize myself, although answering that phone, I visualized myself as a professional. I visualized myself um, as a businesswoman. And so I began to act, I began to speak uh, in a way that I wanted to see myself as this professional woman and how I showed up in the world. So I act as if I already had it until I stepped into that arena. And then you celebrate yourself for what you are already made possible. This is where the inspiration piece comes from in visionary, seeing it for yourself, acting on it and being it. And then the second one is belief. So belief Let's see, let me move this banner here. Okay. Belief is where start listing your contrib contributions um, that you've already made in, in your community, you know, in the lives of other people, your friends and families, because lots of times we forget our greatness. We forget the things that we already, 
that we've already accomplished and achieved. And I, sometimes um, I remember sometimes back, you know, I forgot that um, I used to do some teaching at a community college and um, it was for a, a group of students. Um, I can't remember what they uh, what, what the discipline was, but anyway, they were going to have a, a graduation. They want to be graduated. They asked me to be their speaker. I forgot I, you know, that I did things like that. And so sometimes, you know, we don't realize our greatness and the things that we've accomplished. So we need things like that so that we can believe in ourselves and believe in, in, in the things that we've done. And when you do that, you witness what you are capable of, how you've already showed up, the things that you've already accomplished and the things that you've done. And then you speak power boosting um, words over yourself. You know, I have the brilliance to create a new reality of my future self. We've got to speak positive things into our lives and to ourselves because it's easy to be um, critical. I know there are times I used to be really bad with self-criticism um, and that would get in the way of me believing in myself by what I was saying, by what I was thinking. And then we got to filter those, the, the, the negative energy with more positive vibes by monitoring, you know, what we say um, to ourselves and then experiencing the beauty of life that life um, has. You know, just being out in nature for me um, allows me to believe what's possible. I love to go out to the park. I love to sit in nature and see the beautiful flowers, to hear the birds, to hear the waterfall running behind me. That shows me that there's a belief. I believe in creation and I believe that anything is possible. That's one of the things that you need for visionary. And so the third formula is action. So you can visualize it, you can believe it all day, but the thing, you've got to take action on what you see and what you believe. And that's where we, you create SMART goals. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with these SMART goals and what they stand for. And this helps you take proper action, the right action, I should say, um, just pursuing um, that vision and then plan um, your week. You know, lots of times, you know, and I know I have been guilty of this uh, myself is not really planning my day. And yes, things come up. Um, sometimes people like to fly by the seat of their pants, um, but there's times that we need to have a plan um, of action. What are the things that we need to do during the week um, and really helps us and stay on track and stay focused on, on our destiny and where we're supposed to be. And then keep the momentum with um, small actions on a daily and weekly routine. So doing something at least every day towards your goals, your vision, your purpose, and that destiny that um, that's waiting for you. And then the fourth formula to visioneering is determination. This is big. This is like being unstoppable that we talked about, Luann, the theme um, for this talk show, determination. And that's also being aware of your obstacles and challenges that hinder you. You know, even our mindset, we talked about that earlier today, um, your guest, the mindset, you know, discipline, um, commitment. These are the things that help you be determined. And sometimes these, um, these can be an obstacle when you don't have them um, in place. And then seek support from, from positive and uplifting um, communities of visionary moving forward. You know, I have a community um, on Facebook um, and, you know, you know, being in communities like that where you are being supported, mentored, um, uplifted, empowered um, really helps. And then take current courageous steps in spite of how you might feel scared, doubtful. That's where determination comes in. That's where courage comes in. That's where unstoppable comes in is through that determination. And then listen to stories of other courageous women who are determined people 
who have overcome their challenges. And sometimes we may not have overcome all of them, but we are, we are in a work in progress. We are aware of, of them and we're working towards them as well. And then give yourself kudos for every milestone. You know, lots of times we don't really celebrate ourselves. We want to go to the next thing and we forget to really celebrate those milestones because those took a lot. They were, those took courage and those took determination. And most importantly, don't quit on yourself. I know lots of times we feel like quitting. I felt like quitting. You know, it, it creeps up, but don't quit. And that's where determination and being unstoppable comes into play. And then the last piece to the formula is completion. So once you've created this vision, um, you're taking, you're believing in it, you're taking action. Now you're walking into that vision, that thing that you've completed, that you've, that you've visualized and you're taking action. And here's where you um, can begin to evaluate where you are. Because lots of times we need to evaluate where we are. You know, we may need to make some tweaks, some adjustments because things come up. And doesn't mean to, doesn't necessarily mean that you need to scrap it. You may need to alter it up a little bit and then celebrate, celebrate. I can't say how important that is to, uh, to celebrate yourself because I, I like to celebrate. You know, whether I might celebrate taking a, a nice hot bubble bath and, and with candles and have jazz music playing in the background and have a glass of wine because I feel good about what it is that I accomplished or what I did. Or I might want to go and have lunch, you know, with a friend or else I might just cook me an awesome meal. But anyway, just celebrate um, yourself and then you can set new goals. You know, what? What, what's the next thing that you want to achieve and accomplish? So visioneering, what I just talked about, this five um, step formula to visioneering sets the stage for living life with purpose. It's all in how you see it. It's all in creating it, designing that life that you want for yourself and taking action and being determined and unstoppable. That's how you set the stage for living your life with purpose, regardless of what it is that you have to face. Visioneering is the key to living that purpose-filled life. So, let's close our eyes for a minute because I wanna do some imagination here. Let's do some visualizing. And hopefully those who may be listening, um, if you're driving, of course, keep your eyes open. <laughs> if you're listening to the replay, but I want you to imagine where your destiny can lead you. It could lead you to being the fully expressed version of yourself with total confidence, Maybe a career or business that is aligned with your truest self, your gifts and your talents. Maybe visualizing a fulfilled life, long dream that you've been holding on to. Also visualizing a deep sense of belonging, your true existence on this earth, doing what you were called and created to do or maybe even visualizing a life of service and impact and making a difference in the area that you choose. Just visualize who you wanna be. How do you see yourself showing up? What does that look like for you? I want you to really think about that. Just see it for yourself. See beyond 2020 those obstacles, not living by your outer vision circumstances, the things that are getting in your way, but living by your inner vision light, going inside of yourself, seeing, believing, and taking action on what you see, being determined, determined and deliberate about 
making that your reality. Okay, so open your eyes now. I hope that you are able to get everything that you desire in your life because you can live an inspired life. You know, you live in a life of destiny and purpose. You know, be in alignment with your DNA, your divine natural abilities, because we all have them. And stepping into the woman that you were called to be, because you have brilliance inside of you. And then when you do visualize, be that visioneer in your life, having that life of destiny and purpose, you no longer go through the motions of life because you have direction and you have a mission in mind. And you stop dreaming and you start living your vision, your full potential and enjoying life, doing the things that you love. And that's possible. And all that's possible, the solution to that is becoming a visioneer for your future self. So I just wanted to share that with you. Mm, thank you. Um, let's see, let me stop sharing my screen here. Let's see. Okay, okay, awesome, okay. So, any questions or, or, or thoughts or comments that you may have about what I just shared about being a visioneer for your life, for your future self? You can go ahead and unmute and share your comments or your questions. Oh, Nancy says you're amazing. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mwah, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You are so powerful. It's amazing. Your message really hits home. So. Yeah, you're amazing. Really Thank amazing. you so much. I appreciate that. Martha says, I'm so happy I got here to hear you too. So yep. Martha likes what you said too. So. Awesome, Martha. Mwah. <laughs> I especially love the DNA. I think that's awesome that we all have in those um, divine, natural, natural abilities. That's right. That's unique to you. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. And I, and I so resonate with this concept of doing that thing that you are here to do. I mean, yes. that that's what the that's what the world is calling for all of us. Yes. That's, that's why each of us have those unique abilities, those unique gifts, that unique role that we're intended to play. And thank you so much for for presencing that, bringing that forward. Whether, whether you're choosing to make your dif difference or do your thing inside corporate, inside government, you know, as your own business, whatever it is, thank you so much for bringing that forward. Thank you, I appreciate your feedback. Yes, because, you know, um, I did that in, in corporate America, you know, I was able to identify why I'm here and all because of my own personal challenges, you know, the visual challenges um, that I had to face. So I aligned that and I was very intentional about lining the, my, the work that I want to do with who I am and my purpose and my DNA, my divine natural abilities. And once I did that, I was able to um, play full out in corporate America using those gifts. And so therefore I love doing, my, I love getting up going to work because I was in alignment with my, with who I was created to be and I was operating it in that. And then there were times in certain positions that I had where I revamped my position. I said, look, this is what we needed in, um, in, in this company. Here's what I can do. Um, here's what I like to be able to do. I changed my role <laughs> because I said, what I was doing was not really in alignment with Sheree. And I knew if I didn't make a shift, either I was going to be let go or else I was going to leave. So I presented something um, and they said, hey, let's run with it. And so I began to operate in my DNA. And so I was in line with my purpose and how I wanted to show up. And I felt good and I felt that I could be impactful um, being living in that way. So I think it really um, behooves us um, to really align our work with our purpose. 
Yeah, it just adds so much meaning, doesn't it, Sheree? Yes, it does. And you feel fulfilled. I know I did. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. That's for sure. And Sheree has a wonderful uh, freebie for us. Um, she offers a masterclass called Four Simple Steps to Ignite the Life of Your Desire. So do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Sheree? Yes, it's, I'm, I, I really, I talk about um, living, um, living your vision. Of course, you know why I'm big on having a vision. <laughs> it's interesting, and I, I kind of get to, I said, I'm, a, um, I'm, I'm visually impaired, so to speak, but I'm visually inspired. Um, and why vision is so important for our lives and, and, and how it can, can shift you even even when you are going through a trauma or um, maybe not clear what it is that you want, when you can create that vision of seeing yourself, how you want to show up. Um, and, and, and also it helps you to really ignite, you know, a, a passion that um, maybe you've had that you've um, let go. And so this masterclass is all about, you know, learning how to um, identify what it is that you want and also moving towards um, creating that vision for your life and making your, your dreams a reality. Yeah. Very great. The sound, I saw it and it's wonderful. You guys all Thank you. Check, it Thank check it out. It's wonderful. <laughs> That's how I met Sheree the first time is that through that, um, the video that she offers, the, the master classes. Yes. Um, and I just enjoyed that so much that I contacted her to see if she wanted to um, come on our show. So. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. You know, and, and it's again, it's wonderful to um, be partnered with other other visionaries because it, um, in turn, Luann, I had her to come into my community and, and speak um, to my members in my Facebook community. So I, I think it it's about, you know, we get together and we, we support each other, um, you know, with our vision. I, I think there's enough out here for all of us. Um, to support um, and inspire and encourage, you know, and, and be collaborative, you know, work together. So, you know, I want to thank you, Luann, for, you know, um, inviting me here and then you being a part of my community as well. Thank yeah. you. No, thank you so much. So does anybody have any other questions for Sheree or comments or anything that they'd like to? Okay. Well, I have one more thing, Sheree, to ask you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in your coaching business, um, do you um, focus on mindset much? Do you, uh, what do you believe, you know, do your people have mindset issues that you deal with? Yes, because that's really important because when you're talking about, you know, uh, um, identifying who you are, your passion, your vision, and what you're here to do and creating that, that, that blueprint on how to step out into that, that, um, that life of purpose, you know, there are things that are going to challenge you, you know, mindset, there are things, the old things are going to creep up, um, things that um, from, you know, the past, and, you know, you may feel like I'm not enough. And so I do talk about mindset, as a matter of fact, um, being unstoppable, um, having unstoppable confidence, you know, and what that looks like. So I think that is a very in, important piece, because I think we all are challenged in some way with that so mindset is is um, a key and it's something that i do focus on that's a very yeah. important component in the coaching very, very good thank you um i noticed a lot of your uh what you shared with us had to do with that sort of you know the what goes on the inner part of us yes and of the outer part so much doesn't it yes it does <laughs> our inner work is so important very important <laughs> yeah so 